And now we're just going to go into pay my team. Now, processing the pay will can be a little bit complicated in a practice problem, depending on what the date you're working in is, because it's kind of hard to work in the past and in the future with the payroll, because typically payroll is set up to be working in real time in the current time. So if you're working in this problem uh, far into the future or something like that, and you want to test out the payroll, you might have to be somewhere in the range of when you're working the problem in order to, to be able to practice with the payroll. That said, we're pretty close here, so we should be okay. So we've got the balance that's going to be coming out of the checking account. Here's the balance. We got the pay period and we're talking uh, 1 1 to 131 because we're talking a full month. We're saying that we're paying people monthly. The pay date happens to be the same day as the end of the pay period. That's not always the case. It might be for some people that you, oftentimes and actually actually that you might have the pay period end on the 31st and you might then have a couple days before you actually process the checks to make sure that you can get everything processed but we have it on the same day for our practice problem here and then down below the people were paying we had adam that we set up as a salaried employee and uh and uh, erica smith so salaried employee i think we said like fifty-five thousand a year which comes out to four thousand five eighty-three. let's just double check that if i pull up the trusty calculator calculator where are you it doesn't here it is okay we can say i paid fifty-five thousand divided by 12 there's where that number comes from and then erica we need to put in the hours in order to process the check here which we could do in this outer field but i'm going to go into the to the check because i'm going to make some changes uh, to line it up to kind of our generic practice problem. So if I want to see the detail, I'm going to go into the pencil here. So we'll go into the pencil. Here's the information. So Adam, here's the, uh, the location, the address, the pay period, and the pay date, and so on. So we have the pay at the 458333, and then the employee taxes. So these are the withholdings from the pay for the employee taxes. Now I'm going to change some of these here. This is being generated directly from what we put in that we would have gotten from the W-4, but I'm going to put the, my own information in here to kind of match the practice problem that we put together and match, you know, our bank reconciliations. So I'll give just a quick recap on how this would work. The federal income tax is not our federal income tax as the business. We pay taxes too as the business owner but this is the employee's federal income tax that they would pay that's going to re be reflected on their form 1040 that we are withholding from them the federal income tax is quite complex due to the due to the progressive tax systems and all the different deductions and whatnot that's one of the primary reasons you pay for payroll because you have to get the information from the w-4 and then go through this complex calculation to get the federal income tax, which is useful to have a computer to do oftentimes, although you could look it up on a table. So, but I'm gonna just type, so I'm just gonna make up the number here at 720 to match the practice problem. Now these other two down below are automatically calculated and they are usually more of a flat tax. So they're gonna be a lot easier to calculate and, and notice that are kind of hard coded in here. They won't even let me change it because if I take the uh, four five eight three point three three the gross times the point oh six two I believe it is and that's where we get the two eighty four seventeen that's the employee portion of social security that they're paying into and then if I take the four five eight three point three three times point oh one four five that's where you get the sixty six forty eight the Medicare and then the California tax I'm gonna to try to say that I don't want the California tax because I'm making it a generic problem. So now we have then the 720 plus the 284.17 plus 66.45. That's the total of 1,073 minus the total check, which is the 4583.33 minus the gross pay. So 4583.33 minus the 1,063 would mean the net check at this point of 351270. And then we've got the employer taxes. These are the taxes that we're going to match on our side. 
and that's going to be the social security so we're paying over and above uh we're basically paying taxes not on our income but on an expense the amount that the, we're paying the employees of that 28417 the 6646 it's designed or it was designed to look kind of like a retirement kind of setup right they put money in and we kind of like match it down below now normally you would have another one that we turned off which was the futa federal unemployment tax act and but it's usually fairly small and it has a fairly low cap so we took that out and that would be the federal taxes and that that one is only on the employer side not something that's being taken out of the uh, employee wages and then again if you had any state taxes you could see the california income tax here if that was applicable but we're going to make it generic and then if you had any uh non-required withholdings the uh voluntary withholdings they like benefits they would be up in here as well so that's going to be the the general idea what's this going to do when we actually record it it's going to record a paycheck the paycheck is going to to decrease cash by what we calculated here the three thousand five twelve seventy, and then it's going to increase an expense of the four thousand five eighty three thirty three because this is what they actually earned even though they're only going to get the check for that three thousand five twelve and then the difference is going to have to go to a payable so we're going to have a, a payable for everything that was withheld this 1070 63 that we're going to have to pay to the government because that's why we we took it from the employees or never gave it to them even though in theory they earned it and then we've got the social security which is also going to increase another expense account which might be payroll tax expense or combined into the same payroll expense and the other side of that is also going to go to a liability so that we have to pay our portion of taxes on the employee wages this is the transaction that would happen on an employee by employee basis and we can think about the same transaction happening in aggregate as if all employees were like one employee filing or processing payroll for one time frame so let's save this one i think this one looks good i'm going to say okay let's save that 